All right, hell yeah. So we have dynamics, and we're into relative motion. You, you gotta do like, you know, five different things just to get an answer on this. Uh, but anyway, we got this problem, and uh, we blew it up real big, you know what I mean? So uh, we got it life size. That's actually 200 millimeters, you know? I'm not from, Amer I'm, I'm from America, so no one knows what 200 millimeters is, but 100 millimeters is about four inches. And you're like, oh, I see it. Hell yeah, so that's about eight inches. And uh, so we got eight inches there. That's a sheet of paper. That's a sheet of paper. So thank goodness I have 11 by 17 printer. And so what we did is we printed this off. And then I was just like, well, I don't have AutoCAD, but I do have Photoshop. So um, I just got this. Uh, I drew a square box um, kind of in, you know, in here to get all the dimensions. And then I perfectly sized this protractor. So this protractor is going to be this thing. And the problem states that this thing is like rotating up. But it's also slowing down. You know what I mean? This video isn't going to go into how to solve for the angles. But you, you just get it. You know what I mean? Let's say it rotate. It rotates about 45 degrees every second. So we don't want that much rotation. We want about a tenth of a second. So that's what I did. So you can just imagine not 45 degrees, but just a tenth of that. So we're just going from here to there. You know what I mean? And uh, just to kind of give you a little foreshadow. Hell yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean? This thing rotates because I do have a pin on it, you know what I mean, thanks to some sewing needles. And uh, we can just rotate, so, uh, you know, just, so there's the initial point, and it's, you know, I went backwards, and so, uh, like, why doesn't this point line up? Well, because this thing does two different things, you know what I mean? So, uh, let's say it rotates forward, but then as, you know, when it rotated forward, this thing also travels up, you know what I mean? So we got two different motions. So let's take a look at this again. So um, uh, this thing is going to, so I did a tenth of a second. So we're going to, uh, and then on here, I did another protractor. So we can kind of just start at zero and I even have a line in there. So we only go about 4.5 uh, degrees. So we go up to there, hell yeah. And now we go back to our zero, but then that slider goes 3.5 degrees. So hell yeah, so just right there and I put a dot. Now, if you want, it's good to get the velocity before and the velocity after. So even though the acceleration is slowing down, this thing is rotating, but then slowing down, I'm going to say before it was a little bit faster. You know, it had faster angular speed, and then it slowed down to this. You know what I mean? So keeping all the parameters the same, come back to our zero. So then uh, uh, in a tenth of a second, you know what I mean? It was, it was just a little bit faster, so uh, our line is just right there. It was like 4.7 instead of like 4.6, but hardly, hardly any difference. But it's just kind of fascinating. And then we go to the zero point, uh, but this, this slider, you know, again, this thing travels at 12 millimeters. You can imagine 12 millimeters a second, uh, and that's real time, 12 millimeters a second. And so we... Uh, just traveled for a tenth of a second. No, 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 no. It travels 120 millimeters a second. So yeah, this whole thing rotates 45 degrees. This thing is going to travel five inches. You know what I mean? But in a tenth of a second, it's only going to travel 12 millimeters, about a centimeter. So hell yeah. So that's what we have here. Um, so we already rotated it back, and then we're going to go up um, about a centimeter which with this protractor, and this being 200 uh, uh, millimeters, is only about, uh, is 3.5. So right there at 3.5 is my mark, and we mark that. So hell yeah, so now let's talk about how simple velocity, because they want the velocity of this slider and the acceleration. Now the velocity will just come out in spades, because it's just really simple to say the velocity is this change in position. You can measure this in millimeters, you know what I mean? We, we can just, I mean, I can do that right now and eyeball it and be like, hell yeah, the absolute velocity, you know what I mean, the absolute magnitude of this, it looks like it went, uh, it, 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 that's 30, that's in centimeters, so that's 30, let's say it's 32, 32 millimeters. You know what I mean? So in a tenth of a second, it went 32 millimeters. So it could go 320 millimeters a second. And now we just go to our answer and be like, hell yeah, the, the absolute value of the velocity is, uh, look at this, I'm just impressing myself. So the magnitude of that velocity is 322. 
Okay, so velocity is going to be the easiest, and we got two different points, so we can actually find the velocity right here and the velocity right there. And we're going we're gonna to have a change in velocity. And the cool thing about having three points is that you can draw a line, and you got two different uh, orthogonal directions that are going on. One, if this point was right in line, we could still have acceleration, you know what I mean? Because uh, it could travel like a greater distance in a tenth of a second, but then maybe the other dot's like right there, you know what I mean? So it actually kind of slows down. So then our acceleration, let's see if I can do this, our acceleration vector will be that way, you know what I mean? Back that way because it's slowing down. Now the other, the other part of this acceleration is kind of the hidden one. It's due to all this rotation, and this problem's crazy because you even have the Coriolis effect. You know, you got way too many way too many equations going on where all you had to do is just set it up hit three points and you can just get the acceleration so I would say the hidden acceleration is uh, this thing is going along this straight line so what type of velocity does it have any velocity that direction hell no but somehow this point ended up there so the only way for this to actually um, the point to go from here to there is in the in the time it took between these two segments uh, that traveled that distance, you know what I mean? And so uh, we, we could even do that and then, sorry about this, I, I, I wasn't planning on this. But let's say it's, uh, let's say it's, point, it's five millimeters. Well, then, uh, now we're, we're totally gonna get that wrong. Uh, let's, uh, all right, I'm back. And yeah, we're not gonna do that because this isn't our xy coordinate. You know, if this was our x coordinate and this was our y coordinate, hell yeah. All of our excel we're going to have two different types of acceleration, you know what I mean? Due to this maybe dimension slowing down, hell yeah, we could take that change in velocity and then uh, uh and then it'll be a tenth of a second. Um you know what I mean? And then you're going to have this velocity. In a tenth of a second, it must have gotten up there. But anyway, so we're not going to do that. I'm just going to show you the totally straightforward way to get velocity. And um, so we're going to go over this and call it a video. So we got three points. You know what I mean? I measured these out. This one was negative uh, uh, 28.5, and it was down 14.2. This one was over 26.5, up 16.9. So once we get... Um, now we have three different points. We have this point, negative, negative, this point, zero, zero, and this point, positive, positive. So then what we do to get velocity, velocity is just change in position, change in time. We did this in a tenth of a second, so all of our values divide by 0.1, which is kind of like multiplying by 10. So we're going to have a, a difference of zero minus negative 28.5, hell yeah, uh, and, that's, and then multiply by 10. So our velocity here is 285 millimeters per second. Same thing here, 142 millimeters per second. Do that again to get these velocities. And then uh, the acceleration equation. It's just change in velocity, change in time. Again, our time uh, frame was 0.1 seconds. And uh, we're going to have, look at this, 20, but then divide by 0.1 is going to be 200. And then this turns out to be like 27, divided by 0.1 is 270. And hell yeah, this is our acceleration. And you can see that the acceleration is uh, over 200. Each of these is going to be 100. So over 200 and then up 270. And hell yeah, that's, that's the direction of our acceleration. So with no equations and just setting up the problem, you know, and then our velocity is over here. Our velocity, what the hell is our velocity? Uh, and then I even average these two. So we get uh, 275 and then 155.5. Hell yeah. And then here's the actual values. You know what I mean? So obviously we're going to be a little bit off. Velocity is going to come in real clean. You know what I mean? But then the, uh, the air is going to compound. So it's actually really difficult to get the acceleration perfect. Or even like, I just struggled to even get it in the ballpark. It took me just a lot of, um, a lot of precise uh, work. Because just two millimeters. So if we go back to here. Because I'm, I'm getting about a two millimeter difference, which is causing, you know, 20 to 30. So two millimeters causes 20 um, points of change in that acceleration. So just measuring this 16.9 compared to uh, this uh, negative 14.2. If there's a couple millimeters difference off, that's what's causing that. But hell yeah. 
So, uh, but this was just really satisfying. It took me like literally all yesterday and then most of today because I was just kind of striking out measuring. Measuring had to be real precise. So, uh, velocity, not a problem, but um, that acceleration, uh, the air is compound. So let's look at the answer and you can see that here's the acceleration of vector. And hell yeah, 292, 228, and a total of 370. And it just looks exactly like ours. So, you know, I mean, you don't have to know anything about equations at all. And you can just, you know, run the, you know, kind of set up the problem. And then uh, just do a small change in time, you know, rotate things. And find those positions, mark them. And then you can get an idea of kind of what's going on. So, hell, I'm going to do this more. But thanks for joining me on this one. Uh, this was pretty sweet. So, uh, hell yeah. And again, the problem is... Uh, this rod rotates at 0.8 radians. So let's, let's talk our way through this because no one knows what a radian is. A radian is 60 degrees, so 0.8 is about 45. So every second this thing's rotating 45. And again, this thing is going to travel every second at 120 millimeters. So if that's 200, 120 is just about there. So we're just going to about there. So in one second, this thing rotates 45 degrees and then this slider also uh, rolls up to there. So there you go. So just between here and there, the position was here, and a second later it's there. So you already kind of know the velocity vector is going to go that way. Now the acceleration is a whole other animal because this thing is kind of slowing down too. Um, and uh, that, that's for another video. But uh, in, in the other video that I will do is I what you really want to do is find exact locations for these values, which is really difficult. That's why, you know, the chapter just lays it out and you just use the equations. But when you use the equations, you really have no idea what the hell is going on at all. So it's just kind of fascinating. So I'm going to do it the other way, where we're going to do a very small change in time, maybe like a thousandth of a second. So then, you know, these, these like will hardly move, but we can get decimal accuracy uh, and then when we do the change in position, change in time equations, hell yeah, we'll be like rock solid on that acceleration. But it's just really difficult to figure out what the hell is the equation, you know what I mean, for in a thousandth of a second, where is this going to be? You know what I mean? But anyway, that's going to be for another video. So thanks for joining me on this one. And uh, hell yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe setting up more problems in, in Photoshop, putting them on this board, rotating them through so you can get velocities and accelerations. All right, thanks for joining me. And guess what? That's a video.